So I think that there are two uh, aspects in this abstract which are kind of uh, relevant, I would say. First of all, the canine model, as you said, is something uh, completely new, but also not so new in terms of um, historical value of the dog uh, as a model to validate and implement clinical protocols for allogenic therapies. We learned this for allogenic bone marrow transplant. The dog was invaluable to uh, establish protocols that uh, were not uh, established in, in rodents, could not be established in rodents. So. Uh, if we can prove that a therapy is working in the dog, there is high chance that the same approach can also work in humans. And we've learned this from history. So what we've done, we've shown for the first time that INKTs in the dogs are functional. They are remarkably similar to INKTs in humans in terms of uh, genomics, immunophenotype, transcriptome, and function. And so the second point is that we started a pilot canine trial where we used allogenic INKT from unrelated dogs to treat some unrelated recipients. And what we've shown is that even very high numbers of canine INKT are very well tolerated without any toxicity. And this, again, I would like to emphasize these were unedited INKT with a very easy manufacturing that doesn't require any further genetic manipulation. And what we observed also that using a new strategy to infuse INKT is that uh, there was an early activation of the recipient immune system. Cells. There were cytotoxic cells that will be important in cancer patients to fight the tumor, but also regulatory immune cells, which are those important to uh, deliver an anti-GVHD effect, but also to prevent rejection of allogenic INKTs. And we observe these effects for at least one month, both in the circulation, but also in the bone marrow. So this is suggesting that INKT had this inherent ability uh, to promote long-lasting responses that could possibly also deliver durable clinical remissions.